Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. In this project video, I'm going to make this little cross grain box. It's a nice lid out of plum burl and a base out of walnut. But there were some adventures on the way for this box. It's, I started out with the lid and made a nice lid out of the plum burl. I had some cracks to fill, but not a big deal. And then I was turning this base out of this walnut. And as I turned it, I started noticing some bad check cracks in the, in the wood. Uh, I tried filling some of them with CA glue to try and lock them down, but, uh, and decided to push it a little bit more, and then disaster. Uh, so what do I do with a very nice lid with no base? So I searched and looked around my inventory, didn't have a lot of nice wood that would match this lid and match it in size. Finally, I found another old bowl that I had rough turned, I don't know how long ago, definitely dry, and it fit the lid, so I said, why not use that old bowl and return it for this? Unfortunately, I don't have film for this one, but no, no other matter. I'll show you how to make that one instead. But another thing of note on this is that I, for sanding, I sanded with my mixture of beeswax and mineral oil. Uh, this is 75% uh, mineral oil and about 25% beeswax, roughly. It doesn't matter that much. This is a little bit low on wax, so it's a little bit uh, more liquid mixture. But since it's summertime here, I did, made a different approach to mixing this and melting it up. Generally, you use a double boiler and then you have to clean it. Uh, double boilers for safety since you don't want to ignite the wax. But this time, I just took my empty container, added a pint of mineral oil, added a quarter pound, a little bit shy, but of uh, beeswax, and then I put it up in my attic for a day, took it down, uh, there's still some chunks of beeswax, stirred it up, mixed it up, broke up the wax a bit more, put it up in the attic again for another day, brought it down, stirred it again, it's ready to go. So, no double boiler to clean, no problem. But for now, let's go ahead and turn this nice cross grain box. Just a note on cross grain boxes, you don't want a tight fitting lid because seasonal movement in the wood is much more traumatic in a cross grain profile and you don't want it to stick. So this is a loose fit but with a mortise and tenon to hold it tight. So let's go ahead and make this cross grain box out of plum, burl, and walnut. The wood for the lid is plum burl. I got it from a carver who lost his job as a college professor due to COVID. He is moving across country and had to leave a pile of dry plum wood and a, with a lot of burl figure. I have selected a piece of the plum for the box lid. I have pressed it with the live center against a closed chuck. It could have been a faceplate just as well. This is quite secure. It could spin if I get too aggressive, but generally a little more live center pressure cures that. As long as I have one nearly flat surface, I am happy with the hold. As a minimum, I will cut a good tenon for mounting, but frequently I will do some preliminary exterior shaping while held this way. But I do not recall ever doing finish work while held this way since there is always some axis shift when changing the mount. My chuck has a dovetail jaw, and I like it that way for a better hold. I do check for a flat surface. The flat edge of a skew is handy. Now that I have reversed the wood, I am addressing what will be the inside of the lid. I want the lid to overhang the bottom just a smidgen. It looks good. The next measure is a mortise for an expansion mount. This will be how I hold the wood while finishing the top surface. A box scraper does most of the detail on the edge. My skew just does a little undercut to form a dovetail. For bulk wood removal, my gouge makes short work of that.
That is enough for now. I may deepen the mortise later as I finalize the lid shape, but at least it is well marked out and may be sufficient. Next, reduce the lip, actually forming a tenon for the lid inside the base. Then remove a little more wood from inside the lid. No formal rules, but I want to reduce the weight and have some interest in the shape for when it is seen. As I removed wood from the bottom side, some nasty cracks are revealed. I filled these cracks with brass filings and CA glue. I may have to do something about these. I have now reversed the wood again to finish off the top side of the lid. I am trying for an OG curve, but I need to clean up the bottom side from filling those cracks. Fortunately, I still have room on my OG curve to cut another temporary tin. So now I have reversed the lid one more time. It does not take a lot to clean up the CA glue and brass, but now I will take the time to sand the bottom side. With that repair completed, I reverse the lid one more time using that mortise. Then refine the OG curve to remove that temporary tenon. Now to sand the top side. Generally, I do not show sanding. I am sanding now to show using the mix of mineral oil and beeswax as a sanding media. I scoop up a little bit on the sandpaper starting with my coarsest grit and go for it. With the mix, I can sand at a higher speed. The mix lubricates the sandpaper and helps to dissipate the heat. Instead of dust going into the air, it is trapped in the mix and can be wiped away. The final bonus is that my hands are moisturized and smell pleasantly like honey. I wipe off the wood between grit changes. It is time to turn the bottom section. So far, I have used it to ensure the top pieces are compatible. I could show all the mortises, tenons, shaping, and hollowing, but all that was for naught. The wood was not as solid as it seemed in the original block. I applied CA glue to cracks that were apparent when it was at the cylinder stage. However, as I hollowed the walnut, I saw more and more check cracks in the side. I considered stopping to fill them, but that is a pain for so many, so I pressed on hoping it would hang together. Until it did not. That is, it did not hang together any longer. There was no way I could glue this one together, but now I have a very nice lid, but no box to put it on. I searched around for an appropriate block of wood, I need a piece big enough and already dry. I do not have much to fit that bill. After a search, I found a bowl that I rough turned several years ago, but have not gotten around to finishing. The main criteria is that the lid can fit once the warp is removed. I start with the same process as finishing a bowl. First press the bowl against the chuck with the live center while I recut the tenon. Then reverse the mount for a more secure hold. This could become interesting. There is not a lot of wood to spare. The outer diameter is a bit large. I need to cut that back. There's not much wood to spare on the bottom either. The inner diameter is dicey. Once the warp is removed, there is not a lot of wall thickness. Definitely none to spare. Since this is a box, I want the side to be very vertical, so I'm using my box scraper. It is a bit tough on the uneven wall. Truing the bottom leaves very little at the corner but it is enough with the deep jaws to serve as a mortise that I can expand the jaws into. 
while I remove the original tenon and refine the bottom. I still need to remount the base section, so I am cutting a new shallow mortise in the bottom just a bit bigger than my smallest jaws. I decorate the bottom just a little. Then sand the bottom with the sanding media. Walnut has open grain. The fine sanding particles in the wax mixture tend to fill the grain. Well, this little box proved to be more of a project than I anticipated. I like the combination of walnut and plum burl. It is much more interesting than a pure walnut box. This box is one that I offer as a remote demonstration via the internet for clubs during the pandemic and beyond just hopefully without the drama of this particular box. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, and tell your friends. I appreciate your comments and questions. Every week I make a new wood turning video and add it to my website. As usual, I appeal for you to wear your full face shield for safety anytime the lathe is running. I will see you next week with another wood turning video.